What's up? This is William Smith Johnson. For today's topic, the cost of failure. Now, this has been brought on by people talking about perception checks, and insight checks, and all those other rather boring mechanical I check something out checks. What the hell is the price of failure? What will happen if the PCs fail? Whatever mad role you've demanded of them. If they are searching a room, do they find the thing? Do they need to find the thing? Is the thing bloody obvious? Or is it a teeny tiny thing? Like a needle. You may not think a needle is important, but we once used a needle to kill the big bad. It was rather important that we found it, enchanted it, worked out how to get it onto the big bad and stick them with it. So maybe in retrospect finding that needle was important. Probably not. We would have used some other like plan. We would have done something else. Probably involved in a 50 ton weight. Or say pure blessed metal or something. I don't know. We had this needle thing, needle plan that we went with that. But what is the cost of failing? If you are searching a room you say, well, I look under the bed, I check the mattress, I ruffle through the drawers, I'm looking for money and jewellery, and I check where the jewellery box would be, or maybe it's hit, slipped behind the dresser. I look in those places, I'll probably find them. I mean, what's the real cost to me not? Um, my character's down 30 gold pieces. So, rule one, firstest. If the cost of failure is either nothing or so abysmally trivial that you need to not bother in the first place, don't ask for a roll. Do what I do. Say, well, you've got, do you have skill on this thing? Whatever this thing is. You know, are you a school thief? Or do you have the perception skill? Do you have the search ability? Uh, do you have a cult as well because you're looking for mystic weirdo stuff if you have the skills and you've got the time they do the thing or it's not important they do the thing you know we all get in we all get in the car we all get in the car and we drive to Miami do you have drive school? yeah then you do it no rule needed however there is times when the cost of failure is non-trivial we have to get over the bridge. The bridge is one of those crazy suspensy bridges. It's going up. Can I gun the car and get over the bridge in time and have the castle all estate on the other side so we can continue going, doing whatever we're doing? Now you make a roll because the cost of failure is not trivial. Your driver didn't gun it hard enough, didn't swerve through all the other rest of the traffic and got to the when the bridge was like this you cannot continue forwards you are delayed whatever is chasing you catches up whatever you are chasing gets away or you sort of just fail and your car goes up the ramp and lands on the other side and totally crapped out the suspension your car goes nowhere and now if you're being chased well the bridge is up you're on the other side but now you don't have a getaway car or if you're chasing someone they get away still. Your car's a piece. You've just wrecked your car. Non-trivial. So, talking about these passive information gathering skills, though, they're often, the cost of failure is often utterly trivial. Now, I've seen so many bad ones. You look out on the bay, making a perception roll. Okay, well, I succeed. I fail. Okay, well, you, Bob, you see the ship in the harbour. A ship in the harbour. That was an actual perception roll I had to make. I was wondering, I can't see a fucking galleon in the bay. For a galleon it was. No, I can see a galleon. I've, I've got eyes. <laughs> they work. Um, that's another thing I find that new GMs often do. Uh, that guy is 60 feet away. Was he armed? 
You can't tell. You're 60 feet away. Bloody hell, dude. 60 feet. <laughs> There's those guys at that table over there. I can tell if they're armed. I'm a warrior. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I'll know if they're packing heat. I'll know if they're wearing armor. But it's 60 feet. That's a long way. Only. Only in the combat system, man. You know, if I've got perception, I should be able to tell that thing. I should be able to notice that. Especially if I'm, in that case, I'm a warrior. I can tell. You know, if I was some nerdy wizard who hasn't been out of this tower ever. And, you know, I don't know the perception skills. Maybe I can't tell. But again, it's probably something I wouldn't know. And ideally, it's something my character wouldn't look for. Probably shouldn't ask for. So again, it's a case of, do you know how to do the thing? Do you not know how to do the thing? So you can tell. Maybe you should give extra information to these people with those information gathering skills. For the PCs with perception, with the, they notice things. You tell Bob's play, blah, Bob's character has perception. Mira's character does not have perception. So often, say 75% of the time, you say, Bob, your character notices X, Y, Z. Every once in a while, Mary's character knows something first because, well, you know, even normal people notice stuff before, you know, trained people do. But on the balance, the person, the, the person on the train notices the thing. And same with this insight skill people have been rambling on about. People seem to think that insight is a lie detect skill. No, it isn't. It, you can tell the motives. The motivations, you can, you can see what a person is thinking or what, what they are feeling. And there are tells to lies. Maybe you, if they say, well, and again, you should just, if they have insight and the other person does not have something like deception or persuasion, then you should just tell them, yeah, they've got the skill, they, the other person does not. Is it really important? And do you want to give this information away anyway? If you want to give the way, away the information, then go ahead. <laughs> But if they're balanced, you know, if one has perception, one ha the one has well, one has perception or insight, whatever, it, whatever it's bloody all called, and the other one has deceitful, deceit or lie or con, then maybe there is an opposing role because it is coming down to their skills and their abilities and their natural inclinations and a bit of random luck. Do they notice the tell? You know, whenever they, that person lies, see, bing on the nose, and. You know, if it's an ongoing NPC, maybe you can just, you know, insight just lets you know. Whenever they lie, they do that. Bing. And just whenever you're talking and you're being the NPC, just occasionally, boop. And if they ask, or they notice that thing, you know, you notice you're doing some tell for your NPC. They say, what does that tell for? You're doing a tell. Okay, make an insight check. Right now, you can work out what that tell does. It also gives you some, you can t understand what's going on. The merchant is selling you something cheap and is giving you a good deal. Are you suspicious? Merchants normally overcharge you. Why are they trying to shift this thing? And maybe you want an insight role, you know. Maybe you can tell that they're nervous or they're frightened. Maybe the item is hot, it's just being unloaded to them by a thief. And they know it's hot. They know whoever, when the authorities catch up with you, whoever catch when the flowers catch up with the item, whoever's got it is going to be instantly guilty. So they don't want to be caught with it. They want to move it on. They want to shift it. And you're some fool adventurers. I'll just sell it to you for five gold pieces. Yeah, have this magic item. Sure. <laughs> An inside check might give you a bit more information there. But again, is that really critical if they fail? If someone says, I've got insight. I can tell. Just tell them. Because, you know, although maybe... Or maybe someone, you can tell someone's frightened. Maybe they're worried. You can't tell what they're worried about. Maybe they're just worried because there's an impending orc invasion. And they're worried about that. Maybe they're worried about something completely different to what you're there talking about. Someone could be totally on the level of you, but they're still worried or nervous because they have a mistress. And they're worried they're going to get caught out in that. They're trying to be cagey and trying. they're watching their words. They're being very careful in their speech because they don't want to give away that they have a mistress. The dispositions of the troops on the border, uh, that's just business, but they're still nervous. So occasionally, you'll get what they call a false positive. You should always occasionally just throw one in. That's why you should always be vague. You don't say they're lying. Well, you can say they're lying. What are they lying about? They're lying about the thing you're concerned about? They're lying about something else. 
But again, if a PC can do a thing, it'll do a thing. Is the cost of failure really that great? So, those are my thoughts on using these passive information gathering skills. Like most skills, all skill uses and all these all role playing games really. If the cost of failure is zero or trivial, why bother? Just say you do it. You do the thing. Especially if they've got skills in that thing. Thank you.